What is up guys? We're going to be answering the question, what is file path traversal, otherwise known as directory traversal, and it's a type of vulnerability, and we're going to see an example lab in this video where we exploit that specific vulnerability. We're going to be using this lab. The description is as follows. This lab contains a file path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. Fine, let's access the lab. We might be wondering what is significant about that Etsy password file. And the short answer is nothing that much. It's fairly useful for reconnaissance because it gives information about the various users on the system, but it doesn't, as the name might imply, allow us to access user passwords. It's more of a token that's used in vulnerability labs, like the one we're looking at right now, just to indicate that we have arbitrary read access to a part of the server that we shouldn't really be able to read unless we're the owner of the server. So the Etsy password file is really just a token to say, hey, I've hacked the system, it's been compromised. Now in the lab description, we're told that there's a problem or a vulnerability associated with these images. So let's just check out these images. And we're going to start by inspecting their location in the DOM. So we have image source equals forward slash image. So that's the URL. We then have a query string as indicated by the question mark. It has this param file name, and then it has this value 70.jpg. Now as a tester, we should immediately be curious about that 70.jpg because it looks like it's just the name of the actual JPEG file on the server. So for example, if we were to open this image up, for example, we can copy image link. Let's paste that into a new tab. We should see the image. What if we were to just change the name of this JPEG? 1.jpg, for example. Okay, we get a JSON response that says no such file. Fine, let's try a few different numbers. 3.jpg. There we go, we appear to have some arbitrary file reading going on. We don't know whether we're supposed to be able to access this image or not, but the point is we're able to traverse this directory by providing arbitrary file names. And if that specific image exists, it's loading it up in the browser. Now this might not be a big problem. It could be that there's a hundred images in this folder, for example, and they're all public facing images. They're loaded at various parts of the web page and we're supposed to be able to access them. Of course, I'm sure the developers of the site would still prefer that we'd be able to access these images as and when they're relevant in the context of the page, but it's not a big deal if we can arbitrarily traverse this directory because these are all public images anyway. Although, you know, whatever that guy in the image is doing, it just, it just doesn't look safe. So what actually is the file path traversal or directory traversal vulnerability? Well, what if we could break out of this directory that we're evidently in and start reading other files on the server, which we're definitely not supposed to have access to, like Etsy password, for example. And as part of a file path, it's possible to specify that we move up a directory. And we can do this with the dot dot forward slash. So let's create a completely new file name here. And we're going to go dot dot slash. So this is basically saying come up one directory from where those images are stored. And then let's see if we can enter Etsy password. Now this is probably not the location of the Etsy folder. It's probably not one folder up above the images, but let's just run this anyway. So we get no such file. It's clearly looking in a certain directory somewhere and establishing that there's not a file inside the Etsy folder called password. All right, let's see what happens if we go up another directory. Again, JSON response, no such file. Let's go up another directory. Well, now we get something completely different. So it's saying the image contained at the path that we've given cannot be displayed because it contains errors. Now we're not getting anything useful here, apart from the fact that there's clearly a file that exists. So before we were getting a response saying, there's no file here, 
This is not a valid path you've supplied to the app. Now it's saying there is a file here. We just can't read it. And we're not that surprised because if this is the Etsy password file, well, spoiler alert, it's not an image. It contains text data. Now, if we fire up the dev tools in Firefox, take a look at the network tab. Let's refresh this page. You see our image there and we can have a look at the response. Now, just so you know, this is not the most efficient way to solve this particular lab or this particular problem. I'm doing this for a very specific reason, and that's sometimes we can be so close to the solution or the exploit, but we just don't quite cross the line. So the lesson here is to keep pushing if your intuition is telling you that something is not quite right, something seems vulnerable. Now we have actually loaded up the Etsy password file here, and the browser's trying to render it as an image. Now, when we get different types of response from the server, it's possible to toggle and see the raw data, but it's not possible in the case of an image. And that's because if we look at the response headers, we see that the response header includes content type image slash JPEG. So the browser's not really interested in showing us the raw data, which is essentially binary format. It's just showing us its failed attempt at converting that data from the server into an image. And then it's not really showing us any of the raw data associated with that request and response from the server. So there's a couple of solutions for this. We're going to start with the potentially easier solution, which doesn't involve the browser. We're then going to come back and see how you can actually use the browser to access the information from Etsy password. So to help us do this, we're going to fire up Burp Suite. The next thing we're going to do is instruct Firefox to proxy traffic through localhost port 8080. And I'm using the Foxy proxy Firefox extension for this. Very, very handy for not having to manually change proxy settings every time we switch to using burp and back. So we'll turn on our proxy. We're then going to go to the target tab in burp to see if we can capture some traffic. We're then going to refresh this page that contains the error message regarding the image. And there we go. We see the request appearing in burp. Let's check out that image request. And let's have a look at the response data. We'll look at that. We do have the header image slash JPEG, but we're being given the raw data that the browser is receiving. And that, if you've seen it before, you'll know is the contents of an Etsy password file where we can see the various users on the system. We can kind of see in this case that although the DevTools is very useful, it actually served as a hindrance in finding the solution because it was unable to give us the raw data. Let's return to the browser then and see if we can actually access this data via the browser. Now, one thing we can do is right click and choose copy and copy response. Let's now pull up a text editor I'm just going to paste the response in here and we get something that's unreadable. Now, what this is, is a representation of binary data that's supposed to be the image data. Well, of course, this is not actually an image, so you can see the problem with that. We've got binary data representing an image, which is not really an image, it's actually just text. And this is encoded in base64 form. Now, how do I know it's base64? Firstly, this equal sign at the end is a bit of a clue that it's possibly base64 encoding, plus base64 encoding is used very often to use multimedia type files in a browser because the browser can't really work with the binary data directly. So it often uses something like base64 encoding to represent the binary data. So normally it would be able to take this binary data in base64 form and render an image as part of the web page. Of course, it's erroring out in this case because this is not actually an image. It's just text. So one thing we could do is take this base64 encoded string. We can actually use burp again because burp has what's known as a decoder. Let's paste that string into the decoder. Let's choose decode as base64. And there we go, we have the contents of our Etsy password file. 
Now, is there a way we can do this without using but at all? There certainly is. One thing we can do is try and download that image file. So let's choose save image as. Now we don't have a file extension here and the way that our system is going to interpret the data for that file is going to be based in a large part on the extension we give it. So for example, if we name it something like image.text, well, when we open that file, our system is going to understand that this is actually text data, it's not image data. So although we're calling it image, we're giving it that .text extension. So let's save that. So let's fire up the image.txt file that we've downloaded and you can see raw text data. And of course, if we don't realize by now, this is the same text we've seen previously. This is the Etsy password file, which is proof that we can arbitrarily read files from the server that we really shouldn't have access to. And that's the key concept here, file path traversal or directory traversal. We've also seen some secondary lessons here, which is to keep pushing if you sense something's not quite right and you feel that there's an exploit, just keep pushing that bit further because I'm sure there's so many instances where a hacker gets right to the point where they should get the exploit but give up at the last moment. So you don't want to do that. Also, we've seen when the server is returning a response with content type image as the header, it's a little bit tricky to access the raw data and what we're seeing as a response is actually the base64 encoded version of that data. So we're going to have to decode it first to see what's really going on. Or as we've seen in this session, it might be easy just to use BERT proxy when we're testing these types of possible vulnerabilities. All right, hopefully you found this a useful introduction to directory traversal or file path traversal. Thanks very much for watching.